is Rivian going to be the company that dethrones Tesla? Ray Dalio actually just purchased shares of this. Granted, people are making a big deal about this. The guy manages $145 billion and he bought two to $3 million worth of shares. But this company, Rivian, is incredible. Just look at these vehicles. I mean, they. I'm starting to see some where... I'm located here in Ohio. Look at these interiors. It's an absolutely cool car. The question is, is this company going to last? And if they do last, what for, what are they going to look like? Dalio, this is the big news that everybody's talking about. He went in and bought about 63,000 shares. It's depending on when he bought it, it. It was disclosed in his 13F filing. It's probably somewhere in the two to $3 million range of, of an investment. He also went on about Amazon, which has really good ties to Rivian. So let's go and look at their numbers that they came out with as far as their Q2 report, which was on, um, which was in July, I believe. And maybe it was in August. It really doesn't matter. So Rivian, they announced that the quarter ending in June 30th, they produced basically 4,400 vehicles and they were able to deliver 4,467 vehicles during that period. I have heard good things and bad things. I have seen the cars around. I have spoken to two owners that I've seen. I just went up to them and I was like, hey, you got to tell me about your Rivian. They both drive the truck and the trucks are absolutely awesome. The customer service side is a little bit different. The charging station when you're out in public is certainly different. Maybe you, if you if you own a Rivian, you can comment about that. Charging in public is not the easiest thing. I mean, I guess you can use a charge point or something. One interesting story I heard, somebody put their charger into the car. It was a Tesla charger with an adapter on it from home and it actually got stuck in the Rivian. So they couldn't charge their, couldn't remove it from their Rivian, couldn't charge their Tesla. Cause, so they were just kind of SOL. Now, Rivian does say that they are still on track to deliver 25,000 vehicles in 2022. I cannot find uh, their total number of vehicles that they've delivered, but just like I said, in that third, in that second quarter, ending June 30th, they did deliver about 4,500 vehicles. Now, furthermore, this was their statement out to the public. They have 700 vehicles out with Amazon right now. So they have signed some big contract to deliver 150,000 vehicles to Amazon for it to be their delivery trucks. They have 700,000, I mean, they have 700 of them out right now. And they're looking to expand that. They're in bigger cities, Nashville, uh, maybe New York, and then of course in California. Supply chain is a concern of theirs. We have seen this take a massive, massive hit to the company Lucid. Also another great EV company out there that is pretty kind of starting to do big things, has a lot of Saudi money backing them, but the supply chain continues to limit them. Again, this is not the end all be all. This company has done the most difficult thing and it's not create a sexy concept. It's not create a sexy website. It is build a factory. They have built a factory. They are producing cars. They are are more likely than not here to stay for a little while. But remember, I've talked about this in the past. There was a company, Karma, out there that was around Fisker Karma back in 2012. They came out with these incredible cars. They were forward thinking. They had solar panels on the roof and they gone. Great cars still out there for sale on, on Auto Trader or whatever, but they are not there anymore. So that is something that you need to think about. The R1 pre order backlog was about 98,000 cars from consumers in the United States and Canada. So they have a long way to go before they start delivering those, uh, those uh, uh, 98,000 cars out there. The charging station. This is the most important thing for any EV company. After you get the, after you get the product out there, the next most important thing and the biggest challenge is getting charging stations. Our initial goal is to open 3,500 fast chargers at 600 sites across popular routes, targeted destinations, and major highways across the United States. Right now, Tesla has out there 36,500, and they're looking to do about, well, about maybe 10% of that. So the question becomes... Who's going to get the charging network out there to be able to be on the level of Tesla? I think that is the EV company that is going to, to be the most successful. You look at companies like Porsche, Audi, BMW, I believe they have an EV. Where do you charge the cars? That's the true question outside of your home. We generated $364 million in revenue, primarily driven by vehicles delivered in the quarter. We generated a negative profit of $704 million. Total operating expensive in the, in expenses in the quarter were basically $1 billion compared to the $580 million in the same period as last year. No surprise, they're just spending because they're a young company. Based on our latest understanding of the supply chain environment, we are reaffirming our 2022 production guidance to be 25,000 total vehicles delivered, which is going to be interesting. And they 
they say that their plant in Georgia is going to be ready to do some vehicles in 2025. So the question becomes, what do we pay for this company? I'm going to put it in the stock analyzer tool, but before I do, my name is Mo. I am a value investor along with Paul. And what we try to do is teach a process that we just keep repeating over and over. And in the long run, we are going to be better for that as far as beating the market goes. Now, investing in these high flyer companies is a risk because we don't have an idea of where the revenue is going to go, where the ROIC is going to go. Where are the net incomes going to go? What exactly is going to happen here? Are they going to be able to deliver eventually a million cars per year, 2 million cars per year, 10 million cars per year? We don't know. It is a very unknown thing right now. Are they going? Are people going to actually pay for these cars? These EVs are expensive. Is this going to be one of the top, top uh, EVs in the field? No one knows. So when I go to Stock Analyzer Tool and I start putting in assumptions, I say to myself, okay, you need to be conservative here because if you're not conservative, then you're going to get burned. The current price of this company is about $37 and it hit a high. What did this high get to? This thing hit a high of um, $120 a share. That was back in December. So this thing has gone for quite the ride in stock price. Revenue growth. Let's be realistic here. It's a newer company. I'm going to go 12, 15, and 18% revenue growth over a 10-year period. Remember, this is over a 10-year period. Profit margin. I uh, will go 4 six and eight. I think eight might be a little bit high. Let me go here. Three, five, and seven. Free cash flow margin. I'm going to put in the same thing just because everything is unknown right now. I don't know. I will go with PEs of 16, 18, and 20. And remember, this is over a decade, guys. So it's not, I understand this is going to be a high flyer in the near term, but over the long term, let's figure it out. 20% return because this is a big risk for me. And I want to make sure that if I'm going to go in and do something here, it needs to be a bang for my buck. And again, these numbers are probably, I mean, how am I supposed to say? I'm going to pay seven to 30 cents for the company. I really don't know. That's the hard part about this. This is exactly the hard part about this. I don't know what to pay for this company. I don't know what it's worth because I don't have enough information. So if I'm like Ray Dalio and I'm managing $145 billion, I'm going to take two or three million and throw it at it. It's a non-consequential number and say, hey, this is great. If this works out, I make a lot of money. If this starts to work out, I add more money to the portfolio of, of the Rivian investment. That is exactly the approach that you probably want to take with this kind of company. If you are not interested in investing in this company, but you do want to make money on this, and I'm telling you, there is a way to make money on these type of companies. It's right over here on the charts. Learn how to day trade. Rivian, look at this climb that this has had today. This this climb has just been absolutely amazing. And not only that, it follows my rules for day trading. Here's Here's the main gist of it. You need this area up here above this red horizontal line right in here. This is called my sweet spot. This is where your lines, your red line, your red stochastic needs to be for you to get into this position. You need to have good volume, good green volume bars coming in. This means that there are buyers in the stock and it's going to drive the price higher. The last thing that you're going to look for is a buy signal. And that buy signal is an engulfing candlestick like that, engulfing candlestick like that. And that's where you can enter. So this today, you could have made a lot of money on this today just by following my rules. So let's see here. Let's let's try to do this correctly. Um, Actually, here, probably could have added probably this candle right here. Good increasing volume. You were in the sweet spot and you're in this and you're in this and you're staying in this. And the only time that you're exiting this thing is when you start to get a rollover of your red and yellow line. So you could have bought in this thing at about $37.20 and exited some point, probably around, I'm going to go $38, not to give it too much of a stretch. So does that sound pretty good? Making a, making a couple dollars per share today just on something that is a total high flyer that you really don't care where, where the investment goes? I think so. Guys, if you want to learn more about this process and these trading, value, etc., click this video right here. Catch on the flippy flop.